test, test, check one, two. Number nine, number nine, number nine. What's that?
Good morning, and welcome to Christ Church on this beautiful day that God has given us, this beautiful New England fall day. I'm Nick Morris, Clement, the rector here, and it's a delight to be together with you in worship this morning. Our sanctuary extends from here to you and beyond. Wherever there is a heart who desires to love God and neighbor as Jesus teaches, there is the church. I want to thank our officiant and lector and our musicians and our digital verger and our Facebook video and better this morning. You probably have noticed that we're back in the big church this morning and it's a delight to be here and we'll hear uh, from our new anniversary organ which has been uh, installed since last time we were in here. This morning we begin our annual appeal for financial support for our mission. How firm a foundation is our theme. As we complete our 125th year of ministry, we find ourselves amidst a pandemic, economic and political and social strife. But Christ Church has remained true to our mission, thanks to you, and with your continuing help in your participation as living stones, our foundation remains strong. This morning you will receive an email with all the information you need to make a pledge to support our mission for 2021. And in addition, you will find what I believe to be our first ever annual appeal video, which sets to pictures and music a vision of our work together. You'll also receive this week a packet in the US mail with materials to help you decide your pledge. So either online or in uh, the US mail, you can choose how you'd like to pledge. You can pledge online, you can pledge by text this year, or by pledge card in US mail. And please give us feedback on how these different giving pathways are working for you. It's an experiment that we're trying this year in the midst of these new circumstances we find ourselves. I wanna give a huge heartfelt thanks to Duff Lingard and Kim Rocco, who are our stewardship chairs uh, this year for their incredible work in putting this program together, and especially Kim, who put together the video, even amidst her demanding job as a fifth grade teacher in Wellesley. So imagine that life, and you're putting together this video for us as well. So thank you, Kim and Duff. And thank you all for being living stones in the Christ Church Foundation. We do have some other announcements this morning. Uh, you can find them by clicking on the link in your bulletin. I'll just uh, highlight a couple of them. Uh, your regathering team, our regathering team, is meeting this week to assess where we are in terms of the virus and being able to gather together again in person. The women's outdoor lunch is meeting this afternoon. Be in touch with Donna if you'd like to show up there. Invite you also to take the With Malice Toward None pledge that is in your e-blast. A heads up about extended Advent that's coming here on November 8th. Also invite you to participate in the diocesan election eve prayer vigil. More information on that in your bulletin. Thank you to those households who prepared food for Manna Monday last weekend and also for those who put together Be Love food bags for Be Safe. We are feeding people, continuing to feed people. Also encourage you to look at some pictures in the bulletin of our new organ, which you'll hear from this morning. My neighbor's table this evening uh, on Zoom. Again, there's information about that in the e-blast. And finally, it's time to begin worship. We begin with our prelude coming to you from our anniversary organ. Again, welcome.
We give you thanks, O oh God. We give you thanks, calling upon your name and declaring all your wonderful deeds. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning. God is the rock of our salvation. O oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout to the Lord to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving. And praise the Lord with the of songs. For you are a great God. You are a great God. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture, and the sheep of your hand. Oh, let us say, God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. The psalm is read responsively, breaking at the asterisk. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless the Lord's name. Proclaim the good news of salvation from day to day. Declare the glory of the Lord among the nations and the wonders of the Lord among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. More to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificent presence of the Lord. Oh, the power and the splendor of the sanctuary of our God. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the divine name. Come to the holy courts with your offerings. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble in awe. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Paul. Silvanus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers. 
constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to, we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperors. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, 
and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Take our minds and think through them. Take our mouths and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. So today is the day when we begin our annual appeal, when the preacher tries his homiletical best to stir the community into a frenzy of deeper financial generosity, when listeners moved by the Holy Spirit make haste to write a check and put the envelope in the U.S. mail or they click, we click on the donate button for online giving or use all our fingers to text an amount to CCN123 when all of our financial worries and anxieties evaporate into thin air on the wings of the Holy Spirit. I'll be doing that in a moment. First, I want to take you to Paul's church in Thessalonica in the year 51. This is the very beginning of the first letter that we have from Paul, the earliest sense we have of what the first Christian communities were like. It describes a lively Christian community in the upper part of Greece, a thriving port town that was also an important communication center in the largest city in the Roman province of Macedonia. 
This community is one of love and of prayer and action, full of works of faith, steadfastness of hope, labors of love, all in the name of Jesus Christ. The community is also enduring a time of persecution, yet remains faithful to Jesus in its love of one another, in its love of neighbor. One of its preoccupations, clearer in other parts of the letters that Paul exchanges with the Thessalonians, is the nearness of the end. Jesus was thought to be returning imminently. And how should we be living while we wait in the meantime? Without drawing parallels that are too close, the church today is living in a time something like persecution. In addition to attacks on basic truth-telling and compassion, we're enduring the prolonged danger of the coronavirus and witnessing the accompanying injustice and social unrest that the unequal effects of the virus have revealed to those who had not seen or maybe not bothered to see before. And while Paul does get somewhat caught up in the mechanics of Jesus' return, there's actually a section later in this letter where he describes meeting Jesus up in the air. Paul's response to the Thessalonians is this. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep being the church. Keep loving God. Keep loving your neighbors and one another. A similar exhortation is conveyed several centuries later uh, in the Talmud. And one of the rabbis there says, if you have a sapling in your hand and someone says to you, the Messiah has come, stay and finish the planting. And then go greet the Messiah. <coughs> Keep at it. Keep faithful. I also want to take us to southern Turkey in the latter part of the first century, where Matthew's gospel is, uh, may have been written under the boot of Roman authority. In the gospel reading today, we are also presented with an issue relevant to our church and to our time. What are the proper priorities, political and social and financial? What are the proper priorities for the church of God? The community that produced Matthew's gospel remembers Jesus confounding his hostile interlocutors on this urgent question, even then. And in fact, the communities that produced Mark and Luke also recall Jesus' famous and profound gotcha encounter with these questioners. And notice how Jesus not only refuses to answer outright the insincere question, but instead throws a question back on his questioners. And not only on them and the story, but on us and on our priorities. We may not be hostile, but perhaps we are in need of inspiration and clarification some 2,000 years later on what our priorities should be. And Jesus says, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God, the things that are God's. Now, part of the logic of Jesus' response is strategic. He needs to be careful here. Rome is in charge and brooks no undermining of the emperor's authority. That was true when Jesus was alive bodily in ministry in Galilee in the 30s, as well as in the 80s, first century 80s, when Matthew was written and when the Romans had already destroyed the temple. Even a little splinter sect at that time, like the Jesus followers in the time of Matthew, needed to be careful not to poke the bear. And in our own day, when there is in our environment no danger of persecution because of our faith, it may be even more difficult to take Jesus seriously. As with so many of Jesus' teachings, we are required, required to struggle and to reflect and to wrestle what it is exactly that he expects from us. Not in some sort of teacherly guess what I'm thinking kind of a way, but in a way that makes our answers 
a sign of our intention, of our commitment, a sign that we own our own actions. What is it that we owe the emperor to our political system, to our system of government? Is it simply just to pay taxes? Is it the obligations of citizenship? And what exactly are those? Is it to be politically informed and to encourage others to be so? To vote and to encourage others to do so? More broadly, is it to participate in efforts to create a more perfect union? To build the kingdom of God on earth? And how do we do that and not run afoul of the First Amendment? And what is it that we owe to God, to God, especially in this time. That's not exactly the end times, perhaps, that for which the Thessalonians were preparing, but in our time, the likes of which most of us alive today have never seen before. What is it that we owe God in this end time, end of things as we've known them? to love God and to love our neighbor as Jesus teaches. To keep loving God and neighbor as Jesus teaches. And that is what we are doing here at Christ Church. We're doing it. We keep loving God in our worship thanks to intrepid musicians and technicians and lectors and intercessors and Facebook ushers and dozens of households who have participated in worship either here at the church or recorded from home. The Wednesday Bible study keeps studying God's word, keeps zooming God's word. Christ Church households of manna cooks and bakers and sandwich makers and drivers keep serving at our cathedral. Christ Church households of beloved grocery baggers keep filling bags of groceries to feed youth and families in Boston. The men's prayer group keeps praying. Our vestry keeps meeting. Property and finance committees keep taking care of business. Our racial justice team will be meeting soon. Our regathering team has been monitoring the virus and will be assessing again this week when and how it is safe to worship together in person again. Our pastoral response ministry keeps making phone calls and writing notes and supporting parishioners with all kinds of needs, with loving care. Our intercessory prayers are praying away. Our church school is putting together activities and lessons and gatherings, and our staff works tirelessly to keep supporting the mission and ministries of all of us in this church and more. This is what it means to give to God the things that are God's in all things. And it has been amazing, amazing to be a part of it, to watch us all do this and keep doing it. Now, more than ever, our ministry needs the foundation of your support. And in particular, we need funding to continue our tradition of excellent musical section leaders, to underwrite a part-time position to nurture the Christian education of our children and our youth, and to make sure we have the technological means to offer excellent hybrid broadcast worship when it is safe to gather in person again, which is to say that even when we are in person again in this space or in the chapel, we will still be bringing worship to you wherever you are as one body in Christ, no matter where we are. It can feel hard to give during times of uncertainty. Our first hymn this morning mentions that, the anxiety that God releases us from as we trust him. But we have so much to share, and we are already doing it. We have a God whose giving knows no ending, as one of our hymns said. We have a firm foundation because it has been built on God's generosity and love. And our response to that generosity is to continue to love God and our neighbor. Even in the face of pandemic, we live in the truth that God is with us and gives us courage for the facing of this hour. I invite us all to remember that profound truth and to give generously as you're able. 
Thank you. And amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Hear our cry, O God. And listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those. Help us, O God, our Savior. To deliver us and forgive our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, whose glory fills the heaven and whose spirit animates the earth, we praise you for the wonder of life. All that we are and all that we have comes as your blessing. Reveal in us the well of gratitude that nourishes our life together. Even in the midst of pestilence and discord, inspire in us confidence in your provision. As we seek your will for the mission of Christ Church in the coming year, enliven in us your call to be faithful stewards of your bounty. Remind us to recognize your goodness by sharing our resources for the building of your kingdom, in which we love you and our neighbor, as Jesus teaches. In whose name we pray. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your beloved Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. 
Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I invite your prayers and petitions, either silently or aloud, or in the chat feature in Facebook. We give thanks that wherever we are, we are the church. For our siblings in Christ who dwell in places of poverty and danger, we offer prayers and practical aid, especially for Father Millor and the people of St. Luke's in Lazile, Haiti and for Mother McCracken and the people of Manna at our cathedral in Boston. We give thanks for our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishops, Alan and Gail, the dean of our cathedral, Amy, our regional canon, Carol, and our priest, Nick. We give thanks for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and lay ministers, and all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. Are there others? O oh God, our joy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We praise you for the brave ones who daily serve the common good wherever they are, especially school teachers, administrators, and custodians, healthcare professionals and volunteers in hospitals, laboratories and schools, for manufacturers of personal protective equipment, for store clerks and delivery people, for election officials, town clerks and citizen volunteers. As the virus begins to strengthen, preserve us all from groundless fears and unwise risks. Gift us with holy wisdom and prudence. Are there others? Pray for parents struggling to work and home care responsibilities. O oh God, our joy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In this election season, we pray for a spirit of fair play understanding, and tolerance in our political system and our civic culture. For Charlie, Joe, and Donald, for all our courts and all our legislatures, for those caring for public safety as firefighters, EMTs, police officers, and in our armed forces, especially Emmy, Jack, Sean, Ian, Colin, Tim, and Andrew. Are there others? Charlie, Cynthia. May your justice prevail. O oh God, our joy, hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering from danger, sorrow, sickness, or any adversity especially Andy R., Martin, Catherine M., Russ S., Lisa A., Sonia, Summer, Megan, Leo, Barbara, John, Toph, Bob C. Sr., John, James, Nick M., Gail, Bob P., Patsy, Sarah, Michael, Gail, Thomas, Bob M., Susan, Steve, James, Cynthia, Chuck, Mark, Bill, Ruth, Linda, Marianne and family, Linda Evans, all singers and instrumentalists whose ministry is vital at this time. We ask that you give all cancer fighters comfort in their suffering, shrinking and destroying all cancerous tumors according to your will. 
We pray your healing power on sufferers from the coronavirus, all who suffer from unemployment, from racial injustice, and senseless gun violence. Are there other, others to name? O oh God, our joy, hear our prayer. The altar flowers are given to, God, to the glory of God and in memory of Gertrude M. Barr and Joseph S. Barr. Are there others to remember? O oh God, our joy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor that is due. Bring offerings and come into the courts of the Holy One. Let's pray together the general thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O God, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So be swift in love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, who made us, who loves us, and who travels with us, be with you now and forever.
Please join us for Zoom coffee hour. See you there in a moment.